In today's video, I explain why what you're doing is not hit cardio. physique.com and I got some energy back. I got a really good night's sleep which I needed yesterday. You gotta say I was feeling a little run down, a little unmotivated, like I knew I had some work to do and I was grinding through it and you know what I said let, let me get a good night's sleep and man what a difference a good night's sleep makes. I say it all the time to my clients, to my friends, to my family, did you get enough sleep? But sometimes you don't look at yourself but man what a good good impact that has had on my day and uh, immediately woke up and thought man I got a great idea for a topic for a video because it's something I'm starting to implement a little bit of my training again and that is high intensity cardio. It's a very cool topic. There's so much science and literature on it. It's something I've implemented. I implement it with my clients quite a bit. But before we get into that I want to say thank you to the uh, the the people that have requested my free training program. Um, so for those that, that aren't familiar, I wrote a free training program and I set it up so all you have to do is shoot me an email and I'll send it right back to you. That email is training at prophysique.com. Just say, hey Paul, I'm interested in the free training program. I'll send it right back to you. It's a four week introductory guide on how to get started with training. It discusses things simply like, how do you choose a gym? Uh, what should you do in the gym? And then of course like a, a sample four week workout that kind of it's progressively overloading and I use some of the basic lifts, squats and deadlifts and things like that. So have a look if you're interested. I'll shoot you the email with the free training program and for those that have already gotten it, all I ask, just tell me what you like or don't like about it, what you would like to see in future free programs because that is my goal. I want to start giving more back to you guys. I understand that um, I can't coach everybody. And those that uh, would like some kind of, you know, approach that they feel is going to get them started, maybe I can provide that. So, just want to make sure I'm doing the best job possible with that. With that said, let's get started on the topic at hand. HIIT cardio or high intensity interval training. So this has been around since I started competing in bodybuilding. The, uh, the research is more than a decade old that I've seen. And it basically just states that doing interval training at a high intensity, short bursts, is much more effective than steady state cardio at burning fat, retaining lean body mass, building lean body mass. And so it's been around for a while, so I don't want to give you guys too much information on what exactly the science behind it is. It's, it's kind of conclusive, so I just want to give you my thoughts on what I actually think people are not doing. Because I don't think too many people are actually doing true HIIT cardio, all right? So the reason I think that is because I hear people say, oh, well, I'm doing 30 minutes of HIIT cardio. I'm doing 40 minutes of HIIT cardio. No, you're not. You're not. You're not. You're not. If you are doing long bouts of HIIT cardio, I can almost guarantee it's not actually HIIT cardio. So why is HIIT cardio so beneficial? HIIT cardio is so beneficial because we push ourselves so hard for a short period of time that we actually cause the body to go into like this oxygen deficit that it takes 24 to 48 hours to recover from. And some of the studies, they actually tracked how much calories were burned during the period after someone did a HIIT session versus a steady state session. And the study from, I think it was 2007 at Florida State showed the person that did the high intensity cardio actually burn 10% more calories than the person that just did steady state cardio. 10% might not sound like a lot, but you also got to consider that HIIT cardio takes less time. So this person burned more calories in a shorter period of time. And there's also been shown to be some short-term metabolic benefits, right? So the time after that, your metabolism has actually increased. So HIIT cardio, the research is very good. So what is my issue with HIIT cardio? Currently my issue with HIIT cardio is that very few people are actually doing 
hit cardio. Now I did, I wrote an article for a magazine last year, an online magazine, but I wanted to do something for my channel because I haven't actually done that. So let's talk about what is hit cardio. So basically what I like to do is have my clients or have myself warm up for five minutes or so, maybe a little bit longer if it's colder out, and then perform sprints. So we're gonna perform a sprint. What does a sprint look like? Well, if you just wanna go back old school thinking, if you go out on a track and run as fast as you possibly can, like someone is chasing you, life or death, that is what I like to think about. Like you're racing for the gold medal, that is hit cardio. Now, hit cardio in that form, while very effective, in true hit cardio, it's not something that it might be smart for us to be doing if we are physique athletes, right? Because let's admit that there are limitations to running sprints on a track. A lot of that comes down to injury, and if we get hurt doing something like that, well, it's going to lead to us not being able to do training, possibly not being able to do cardio, and possibly having to stop what we're doing altogether because we pulled a hamstring or something, right? It's, it's a very common thing. So I don't always suggest that hit cardio be done on a track. That would be wonderful if we could guarantee it. But we also have to pay attention to the specificity of our goals, right? Now, I've done track cardio and I really enjoy it. But what I learned was as my body fat got lower, I had to kind of alternate and get away from it because I did start to feel some tweaks and things and some aches and pains. So what can we do to do hit cardio? And what should we not do? So here's a few things that I'm not a big fan of hit cardio wise. Now this is just me personally, because as an athlete, you have to be able to push 100%. That's all that I ask. When I tell my clients, hit cardio, I want them going all out. So there's a few machines that I personally cannot go all out on. I cannot go all out on a Stairmaster. I cannot go all out on a treadmill. I cannot go all out on an elliptical, maybe, but it feels really funky, the motion. Um, and some, some of the uh, sit down stationary bikes, I cannot go full out on. And why is that? Well, on the treadmill, I can run faster than the treadmill can go even at full speed. And it just feels weird to me going that fast on a, on a machine and it, it just feels strange. I'm not comfortable doing it. The, the stair master, the stair mills, those also, I can go faster than them. Even at their fastest speed, I feel like I could just, I could climb up the stairs, right? So to me, that's not 100% all out effort. The elliptical, I can push myself hard. The ones with the handles, I can go all out on those, but um, you know, it's, it's, it's an option, but it's not something that I feel really like I'm able to just really crush every single interval on. So what do I prefer? Really, what I love to do at my house here, I have a sled that I love to push. The reason I like to push a sled versus let's say just running a straight sprint is because with the resistance and the position, I'm not able to get the same amount of speed going. So I feel like there's a reduced risk for injury because I'm not overclocking myself. I'm not going that fast. Another one that I love, and it's probably the scariest and I get nervous doing it. Literally, if I know I'm going to do this hit cardio, I drive to the gym, the gym like I have to squat a weight I've never squatted before. I get that nervous feeling. So this type of hit makes me nervous. And that is the spin class bikes. Not the stationary bikes in the gym. Even if I put them to the top resistance and I sprint, those stationary bikes, if I get them going, I find that I can get the pedals free from the uh, traction device. But with the spin class bikes, you know the ones I'm talking about, those evil buggers, where they have the, they're really nice and they have the turn dial for intensity. Well, that dial that you turn for intensity, what I tend to do is I'll ride for my, for my steady state in between the interval, the warm up, the four or five minutes, right? And then I'll crank it up just enough that when I have to push, I have to stand up. And then I stand up and I push as hard as I can for 15, 20 seconds. And by the time that's done, I have to turn the knob down and I hate my life. But let me tell you, that is true hit cardio. So what are some signs that you're doing true hit cardio? Well, as you adapt, these may change. But initially, when you do a sprint so hard, so fast, that you give it all your effort, when you're done, it's going to take a moment to catch your breath, right? You're going to actually be, 
<clears throat> gasping for air, taking huge deep breaths. So that's one great indicator. And as each successive interval takes place, it's going to get harder and harder. And so for this reason, the amount of time you take between intervals is also going to dictate the quality and intensity of your intervals. So don't rush it. Don't feel like you have to sprint for 20 seconds and rest for 20 seconds. Take a minute, a minute and a half, two minutes, three minutes. One of the studies, they actually had the people just run the sprints and take as long as they wanted between the sprints. And they still got fantastic results, right? So it's not necessarily about the time between, it's more about the intensity of each interval when we're talking about hit cardio. So make that the primary focus. But again, when you're done with that interval, this is what it should feel like. You should not be able to talk to someone. You should be gasping for air. And in those gasps, and when you're feeling your breath like that, guess what's happening? You're not thinking about time. You're not sitting there staring at the treadmill, looking at the clock. You're trying to just breathe and survive. And you're thinking to yourself, crap, I got four more to go. I got three more to go. I got two more to go. And I promise you, when you get done with HIIT cardio and you do your little five minute cool down after whatever it is, that's the protocol I usually suggest, a warm up, the intervals, a cool down, time flies. You're gonna get done with that and you're gonna feel all beat up and torn up and can't catch your breath. And a few minutes later, you're gonna get some euphoria, you're gonna walk out, you're gonna feel great, and you're gonna realize you just did a 20 minute cardio session and time flew by because you do not have time to think. You are so focused on going all out. So, if HIIT cardio is better for burning fat, better for retaining muscle, why don't we do it all the time? Well, it's simply put, it's very difficult to do. It's psychologically demanding, it's physically demanding. And so what we don't wanna do is burn ourselves out. We don't wanna get hurt, we don't wanna put ourselves in a position where the type of cardio that we're doing is limiting our goals. Because if you're watching my video, you're probably interested in a physique goal. So HIIT cardio is great for physique goals, but I don't want you to get too caught up. I maximize two to three sessions of HIIT cardio a week, true cardio, and that's adapted. Start with one day, work up to two, keep them a few days apart. It also depends on the type of training you do. If I have someone who does a particularly high amount of high intensity training, like high rep deadlifts, high rep squats, stuff like that, I don't want them doing HIIT cardio, right? This is very similar in pattern. So it depends on the person. This is where steady state cardio still has value. So don't think just because HIIT cardio is great, you shouldn't do steady state. You should mix, you should blend, you should do what fits your goals best. But understand that true HIIT cardio does not last more than 15 to 20 seconds, each interval, all out sprinting, right? It should not last much longer than that, if that long at all. And I feel if you're sprinting for 30 seconds, you're going to have to pace yourself to last that long. So you're not really going all out. So don't put all that pressure on yourself to last 30 seconds. Start off short, start with 10 seconds, 15, work yourself up to 20. But go all out and don't, if you can avoid it, use a setup that requires you to limit your output. If you can use the battle ropes, if you can use a sled, if you can use the spin class bikes, all of these things are gonna be great. And possibly if the, the, the machines that I discussed earlier allow you to go faster than you can go, then those would be good. But that would scare me if I was on a machine and I was starting to fail and it was going faster than I could go. That would just make me nervous. That's personal preference. I want you guys to do what gets you excited, what gets you jacked up, what gets you to do the damn cardio. That's gonna be the best thing. There is no one size fits all here. The benefits of HIIT cardio, the harder you go, the more benefit you get out of it. The better the result will be, the higher the intensity of the interval. So make those intervals count. All right guys, this is Paul from ProPhysique.com. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. And once again, training at ProPhysique.com for the free beginner's guide. Let's have an awesome Friday. I am going to deadlift today with my friend Colin at Powerhouse Gym and I'm gonna get some footage of that. So I wanted to get this video out before so I can take some footage of our lifting session today, which I don't really get to do very often, but today I'm gonna to do it. So tomorrow's video, look for some deadlift tips. All right guys, have a great Friday. I'll talk to you tomorrow.